The Night King isn't gone, not by a long shot, and the actor for The Night King won't shut up about it. We all remember this moment. many of you, I thought, wait, that's it? The, the Night King is, is dead after all these seasons of building him up as, as the big bad? He's dead and the final threat is Cersei? That makes no sense. This series is about how everyone was vying for the throne and worried about politics and they ignored the bigger threat coming for them. I mean, hell, George even told us the others were a stand-in for climate change. And while we were all busy trying to get our own interests done and getting our own leaders in place, our Earth was being pushed to the point of destruction. So, this turn of events makes no sense. But then there was a glorious ray of light, a sign from the heavens. The actor for the Night King started tweeting about how the Night King might not really be gone. And now I am ever so hopeful we'll be seeing the Night King again in episode four to kick some more teeth in. So let's talk about the actor's tweets. First, we have this tweet by the Night King's actor. How did the Night King change Craster's babies? By touching them. How did he change Viserion? By touching it. What did Blood Raven say to Bran Stark in the cave? He touched you. If you don't remember what Blood Raven said to Bran in that cave, here it is. He saw me! The Night King! He saw me! He touched you. I don't know, he was close. But... He touched you. He knows you are here. He's come for you. But he can't get in. He can now. His mark is on him. Emphasis on, he can't get in, he can now. Bran is now marked, so is a part of the Night King's essence in Bran? Is Bran corrupted by the Night King? Will he slowly be corrupted and become the Night King? I mean, we already saw a big change in Bran, but we thought that's because he became the Three-Eyed Raven and downloaded all those powers, and naturally, he should be changed. But what if there are other reasons for him becoming so robotic? I can never be Lord of Winterfell. I can never be Lord of anything. I'm the Three-Eyed Raven. It means I can see everything. Everything that's ever happened to everyone. Everything that's happening right now. It's all pieces now. Fragments. I need to learn to see better. When the long night comes again, I need to be ready. So what if the Night King changed Bran? What if the Night King marked Bran and he will create a new Night King? Or maybe becoming the Night King himself? And what about Arya? Is she marked now? Because the Night King definitely touched her. What if there must always be one? There will always be a Night King. That's just the cyclical nature of this story. But you may be asking at this point, Roris, one stupid tweet isn't enough to say the Night King is coming back, you dizzy bitch. Well, wait, I have more tweets and more proof. So next, the Night King's actor tweeted, Episode 4 is going to have a mysterious twist. There's something twisted and uncomfortable about it. It's so Shakespearean. And then he tweeted, Episode 4, 1 hour and 18 minutes. Episode 5, 1 hour and 20 minutes. Episode 6, 1 hour and 20 minutes. Added them up and you'll have four more hours of Game of Thrones. Still thinking that all that's left is just fighting Cersei for the throne? Food for thought. Come on, other actors are talking about how much they love episode 4 of season 8 and how there's a big tragic twist coming. Big tragic twist? Bran and or Arya are marked. Bran and or Arya change and become the villain that they have to kill to save the Seven Kingdoms. Even the showrunners, when asked yesterday, hey, are the White Walkers gone for sure? They said, we're not gonna tell you that. 
because they're not. If the Night King is truly dead here, I don't know. That was way too easy. I mean, a lot of people died, but still. The showrunners made a big deal about the dagger and how they put it in the book at the Citadel for a reason. Also, that it is poetic that the thing that kicked off the conflict between the houses would be what saved them in the end. But I say no. The Night King isn't really dead. There must always be a Night King. Bran was marked. Arya may be marked as well. So what if it goes down like this? Jon and Danny and their armies march south to take care of Cersei. Bran obviously stays behind with Sansa. And while she's there at Winterfell, Bran starts to act different. I mean, more different than he's already acting. What if Sansa starts to notice there's something a little more off with Bran. Then it happens. Some of the dead that weren't burned come back to life. Well, on life. And they begin to slaughter those in Winterfell while Danny and Jon's army are already moved so far south, they don't know what's happening. By the time they realize what happened, that the Night King wasn't truly destroyed, whether the Night King just reforms or takes over another host, it's too late. They're trapped between King's Landing and Cersei and the undead that have marched south. This is when things really get crazy. And what about Lightbringer? In the ancient books it's written that a warrior will draw a burning sword from the fire. And that sword shall be Lightbringer. Stannis Baratheon. Warrior of Light. Your sword awaits you. That sword was made out to be such a big deal, and now nothing? It, it just disappears? Really? What? I know some are saying that the dagger Arya killed the Night King with is Lightbringer, but... You fucked us on one sword. Don't do it again. Also, the Night King's actor said a Shakespearean twist. You know what that means. Well, Shakespearean twist can be a lot of things, but here's a real life example. This case involves a human tragedy of Shakespearean proportions. A young man overcomes huge physical disabilities to reach Olympian heights as an athlete. In doing so, he becomes an international celebrity. He meets a young woman of great natural beauty and a successful model. Romance blossoms, and then, ironically on Valentine's Day, all is destroyed when he takes her life. Someone is going to be sacrificed or murdered to finally end the Night King. So is it going to be Bran, Arya, Jon, and or Danny? And are we really going with Arya being Azor Ahai? Osis bantis amazis, merikivio dolalaris os machagon kuntas. The prince who was promised will bring the dawn. I'm afraid I'm not a prince. Your grace, forgive me, but your translation is not quite accurate. That noun has no gender in High Valyrian, so the proper translation for that prophecy would be the prince or princess who was promised will bring the dawn. I'm, I'm totally cool if we're gonna do that, but... Are we? Is that what we're doing? And you believe this prophecy refers to me? Prophecies are dangerous things. I believe you have a role to play, as does another, the King in the North, Jon Snow. For sure? Is that your final answer? As Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, he allowed the wildlings south of the Wall to protect them from great danger. As King in the North, he has united those wildlings with the Northern Houses, so together they may face their common enemy. He sounds like quite a man. Summon Jon Snow. Let him stand before you and tell you the things that have happened to him. Because I'm not complaining. I, I'm, I, I'm not a sexist. Because that's what happens when you complain and it's a female character. Will you stay here at Castle Black? I will do as Jon Snow commands. You serve Jon Snow now? He's the prince that was promised. Oh, forgive me, my lady, I thought that was Stannis. Oh, 
Okay, I'll stop for now and I'll let you guys say what you think, but do you think the Night King is truly dead? Do you think he'll come back? Do you think he corrupted or marked Bran and or Arya? And would you be happy if the Night King was really defeated and Cersei was the final boss? Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section down below.